Lovely to see you, Lee, today. Thank you for taking the time out to come over to see us today. You're a local lad, literally just half an hour's drive, so thank you for taking the time out what must be a very busy schedule. It's a pleasure. So, Lee, what made you, um, what made you apply to take part in All The Glitters? What inspired you? I saw an advert on the, the back of a post on Facebook and it said, uh, do you have a talent? Do you want to show your talents on TV? And I uh, just ordered some materials from, from my, my class and I showed it to my wife, Maria, and laughed. And she said, well, why not? Why not give it a go? Um, and we did and we got through. It was such a great surprise. So all the pieces that you've uh, produced have been finished to a really, really high standard. How have you managed to complete this within that really, really short time frame that you're given for each brief? Honest answer, I don't know. It was, it was a blur. Um, I think you, you get in, you get an idea of what you're going to do, and you've just got to get on with it. And there's no time to, to think. Mm. You've just got to do what you've got to do, make sure you've got this and the elbow, that in the pickle, and move on to the next bit. Try to forward think all the time um, mm. to save every little minute. Um, it was mm. tough. Because mm. you know, when they announced the three hours, the initial uh, project for the three bangles in three hours, yeah. I think everybody was absolutely shocked at that. Um, and even I think, well, well, how can you produce three bangles in, in, in three hours? It's scary. It, mm. it was sort of, you, you had to have a sort of a main one that was your feature bangle, and then the other two were just sort of complementary. You couldn't do it all on all three. It was just. Yeah. Get that one, that showstopper, if you like, and then the two just to tie in with different textures. That's the way I went. The idea was a seaside theme, so I had the, the sea star, the starfish, mm. and I, I really wanted to put three of those cutouts on, on that one bangle, but there was no way. I got one in mm. textures on that, so it was like dappled water, the hammered finish on another to sort of represent the, the, the rocks, mm. and then we went with a, a, a frosted finish, yeah. which is a a lovely finish, it's very tactile, feels like sand, so that's mm. the... And quick to apply. It, it, it saved a lot of time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that was the thinking, right, get easy enough to do the hammering, yeah. lovely texture, always polishes nice, then you've got that, that, that flip and having that sandy, gritty feel to that and a totally different look, and just mm. thought, you've got that sort of shoreline, yeah. sand, rocks, just pulling it all together. Mm, clever. The contrast as well between the three. Mm. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. If you had a chance to complete the challenges again, would you do anything differently? Um, yes, I think I played it a little too safe. Um, being used to working with customers and getting it exactly right for, for them as a, a bespoke item, you, you want to take on board what they want and it was hard to sort of imagine, imagine that. So. I think I could have gone a bit more daring and, and I always try and make things that are going to last and work well. If there's sharp and sticky out bits that are going to catch on things, it's not really practical to wear. So I think my mindset is, is that way where in the fashion world, it doesn't matter. It's the look that's all important. And I think it's, I would have gone that way, make it stand out mm -hmm. um, rather than go for the practicality. So yeah, probably would have gone and done things a little differently, but. It's hard to tell. <laughs> so what made you interested in making jewellery and pursuing it as a career? Um, in school, as a child, I was always interested in drawing and art and, and, and things like that, painting, um, just crafty things. And then mum and dad had a second hand shop when we was growing up mm -hmm. and we used to see all the, the lovely furniture and the ceramics and glassware. Um, and I think that must have rubbed off. Um, we used to have a lot, do a lot of house clearances and, and <laughs> me and my brothers would, would, would help with that. And we used to have a lot of jewellery come in as well, albeit um, costume. Mm. Um, so I think it's, it's definitely rubbed off and, and got me interested in that way. When we got married, um, we loved the, the Tiffany lamps and panels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't afford to buy them. <laughs> so we went to a night class to learn how to, to make, oh, make them. Wow. And then a little while later, I, I went self-employed um, making that kind of thing, and lo and behold, started making stained glass jewellery, and then it just followed on from that. So I never really sort of planned it as a career, even though my mum says that you used to always say, oh, I want to make jewellery as a child, I don't remember that. <laughs> um, but it's sort of come full circle. Full circle now, yeah, and, uh, yeah it's, it's just, just find it interesting. If you don't enjoy doing something, no, it's not worth doing. Exactly. And it's just, everything is different. Every time you do the same thing, soldering or 
or filing. It's always there's there's something different every time. It's never exactly the same, so it keeps it fresh. Mm, it does absolutely. So, Lee, what impact do you think the show will have on the industry as a whole? Well, the industry as a whole, um, retail in general, has, has been on a downward spiral for a little while. Um, I think it's all to do with the online shopping. You know, it has had an effect, especially with luxury goods. Um, people do tend to come and have a look or try things on and then go and see if they can find it cheaper. Yeah. So it's nice that people can now see things being made by hand and what goes into it. It's not all glamour and glitz. It is hard work. Mm. But hopefully they can see that it's um, they can have something really personal for themselves and it doesn't have to cross the earth. I think a lot of the time people think that uh, it's for, for elitists and it doesn't have to be expensive. You can make jewellery out of anything. And actually, in the show, there's an episode in, in week three where we are asked to use alternative materials. So it doesn't have to be expensive. It's, you just go and enjoy doing it. So hopefully it'll, there'll be a resurgence within the craft world as there has been with the, the sewing and the, and the pottery to get people back into it and have a go. And then hopefully that will knock on into the industry and people will start to train as jewellers. Perhaps the children watching Sonny and Hugo, Nicola and, and, and Naomi, they'll be inspired by these youngsters and mm. want to take it up. So it'll start it all over again. You mm. know, keep it going, keep the, the craft and the, the handmade going because so much of it is machine made. Um, it'd be a shame to see that go. Like the Art Nouveau stuff gave way to the Art Deco with all the mass produced. I think it's got to go full circle that way. Um, yeah. And just, just keep the industry going that way. Mm. And also being able to um, make something for somebody that then will have a direct meaning with that person as opposed to just going and saying, I'll have that ring. You can say, well, okay, well, you like this, you like this. You know, it's like in the the name Holly, wasn't it? They, there was a few, um, and you can really personalise that piece yeah. for that specific yeah. person. And that bit of jewellery is not just a piece of jewellery. It holds so many meanings and, and sentimental value with it. It's so special to be able to, to work with somebody and perhaps use their old broken jewellery to melt down. So there's that yeah. sentimental element. Um, it, it really is a pleasure to, to work with people and be able to give that sort of modern day heirloom yes. um, that can be passed on. Uh, it, 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 it is, like you said, very personal. There's lots of meaning goes into these things. Mm, absolutely. And there's something really special about having something that nobody else has got. Yes. And obviously the sentimental side of it as well, but it's like my octopus ring. I always get comments. People ask me about it and I'd like one of them. And I go, well, you can't. So what challenges did you encounter working in such an unfamiliar environment in terms of tools and equipment? It, it was fab walking into that, that workshop. It was fully equipped with the best tools going. You know, it was so many things that I, I'd never seen before, didn't know existed. Um, I think in episode one with the bangles, you see me cut it with the shears. I didn't realize there was deeper saws to cut through. <laughs> I thought, I'm not gonna cut halfway through with my saw, I'm not gonna be able to get through. So to see these bigger saws, I didn't know existed, which is silly really. I, I just been blinker, but you're at a different bench, you've not got your tools, yeah. and it's, it's like wearing an old shoe, is that you get comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you was looking for things and they weren't there, and the pressure of the time was like, oh, panic, so you have to run off and get something and come back. So I suppose it all added to the drama and the excitement, and it kept you on your game, like, keep, keep going and just make the most of what you could. Absolutely, because when you're at the bench, even if you've got the same torch that, that somebody else has got, it's going to be slightly different. If you've got the same mandrel, it may be in a different place. It may be here. You know, you, you sit at your bench and you organise the bench depending on how you work. You sit at like Jason's bench and it's completely different. Yeah, and I'm, I'm quite messy when I work. Once I start, the things are just dropped everywhere. I know where they are. <laughs> and then usually I'm very tidy. I can't stand clutter. You know, I like to have everything in the right place. But once I get going and get involved, it's just shut you in there and everywhere. And when you just go to reach for something and it's not there, it's panic, it really was. But but just a pleasure to use up the Durston mills and the near benches. Just it's, I've come from there thinking, right, buy the best quality tools you can when you can. That's and that's what I started doing, just building up my because I know they're gonna last, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. They make such a difference. Mm. Having used sort of budget tools, 
in the past you could really see and it was just nice to have the chance to use these quality items. So on the subject of tools, what tool can you not manage without? Oh, it's got to be my Durston Mills. Um, they're used every day for everything. Um, don't get me wrong, I love all types of tools, but the, the, the mills really do do everything for you. You can't sort of operate without having a set. Um, they use for everything, uh, thinning your metal out. More so with remodeling script for, for melting old stuff down and making um, new wire or sheet to, to turn into to new pieces of jewelry. It's just, just a fab tool. And again, buy the best you can when you can afford it, you know, it'll pay you back. Because I bought a Durston mill when I started you know, 35 years ago and I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to melt metal down, yeah. perhaps recycle it and so forth, just to save money. Um, but that mill is the same mill that we got downstairs here. It's used every single day. You look after it to a degree um, and it serves you right and it's paid for itself time and time yeah. again. And I still go, I must have spent about 450, 500 pounds then. Which was a lot of money. Which is yeah, a lot yeah. of money. And, and this just paid for itself time and time again. And you just can't do without a mill. No. People say, well, do I need one? Well, actually, you do need one. It's not a case of want. You do need one if you want to produce, and it saves you having to buy your um, a whole array of stock sizes. Yes. You can buy a three mil square, and from that you can make round section, D section. You can take it down flat, rectangular section wire, or from that one. So you just got to buy one section instead of loads and loads of pieces. And it's always the way. It'll be a Sunday night. There's no shops open to get any supplies, and you've got a big lump of four mil silver that you want exactly. T-shape. Yeah. So it's great for that. And then you get you out of the hole. Leave it to the last minute. Customers coming in tomorrow. Forgot That's about it. this job. I haven't got time. Yeah. So which technique would you be happy demonstrating and which technique would you least want to demonstrate? Ooh, what's hot and what's not, I suppose. <laughs> um, stone setting is a, a biggie for me because I've only recently come into it. I've not been shown or how to do it properly. So I'm finding my own way and I'm loving it. Engraving and stone setting it is a path I want to, to go down more so with. Um, I'm getting things set Perhaps not the right way, but I'm enjoying what I'm coming up with and it's a little bit different. So that would probably be the one that I wouldn't like to show people or, or demonstrate or teach because I don't fully understand myself yet. Um, but soldering, especially tiny things with a micro weld or a small flame, real intricate things. I, I like to, to show my steady hand at, at doing that. that um, yeah, I enjoy soldering. It is a real skill. And using different torches is, is learning to work with that heat. Yes. So yeah, I, I do enjoy showing people how to solve it and it's, it's such a visual thing people do enjoy. Have you always enjoyed it or was it only since you've, because I think it's the kind of thing you need to practice, 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 because well, a lot of people struggle when they initially start learning it, don't they? It's one of the yeah, most difficult yeah, skills to master, um, but then when you do master it, you're well, all the better yeah, it's, for it's, it. Uh, it's a sense of uh, accomplishment. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose you're always improving. Mm -hmm. like I said, every, if the wind's blowing wrong or the window's open, it will solder in a different way. So it's just picking up on what's going on with your metals and, and, and getting it right again. This, it can save you a lot of cleanup. If you get the solder right, there's less cleanup to do. Mm. So it's, and that's what I'm, what I'm telling the students, you know, I'm showing the students, it's, it's, you can save yourself a lot of time with your soldering, but you've got to be brave. You've got to, you know, because a lot of them sort of are frightened by that heat. You're in control. You've got to conquer your fear through knowledge, I suppose. Yeah. And once you get the drop on it, it's it's a skill, a must-have skill. Yeah. Absolutely. It just takes the jewellery making to the to, to a next level, doesn't it? Definitely, yes. Mm. Um, so what materials do you most like working with? My favourite material, I suppose, is yellow gold, be it 18 or 9. I don't really mind. A lot of people don't like 9, but I don't mind. But remodelling old gold down, just seeing it all flow together, 22 especially, just the colour is so rich. Um, but yeah, 18... 18 karat yellow gold is probably a favourite, just because the if you put silver to it or platinum palladium, just that flip of colour that just stands out. It's, it's a lovely and it's nice. It's nice, rich, buttery colour, isn't it? It is. It's just beautiful, and and it always comes back in. Sort of white gold comes in and out, but yellow gold is always Absolutely. always there. What is your favourite moment of the show so far? I think my favourite moment from the show was walking into that lovely workshop, um, fully kitted up with all the beautiful tools. Some of them I'd never seen before, let alone you, so to, to have the privilege of, of, of working with these quality tools was great. Um, and there was fantastic drawings on the wall showing all the, the settings and things like that. There was old tools there, um, big old wooden draw horses and, and mandrels, you know, that we used to clown around with 
offset. Just being able to see these sort of antics of the jewellery world, these relics from days gone by, it was fab. Um, I think that's got to be the, the moment. Being with all these wow. new people, yeah, it really was a wow moment. And just the reality of, oh, this is it. This gets real now. And, and all the other contestants, they're such lovely people. We all sort of just looked at each other and thought, this is it. Time to get on with it. Mm, that's amazing mm. amazing experience and it's never happened to, to me again you know this was this was my moment <laughs> so some people have said on various facebook forums um sean and solange came across a little bit stern do you think this is a fair appraisal um what were they like in real life um sean and solange superstars of the jewelry world they were fantastic um really lovely people so so just an honor to be critiqued have your work critiqued by them is, is mind-blowing they were lovely and um, i think during the cut things are lost and they did sort of impart their wisdom and say if you've done this or you've done that sean just wanted to get on the bench with you you know he's so keen and enthusiastic they, they were fantastic and, and catherine um she's absolutely gorgeous i know she looks good on telly but in real life she she is stunning and just absolutely bonkers she kept entertained all the time if ever you was a little bit down she'd know she'd be there she'd, she'd say something just to lift your spirits and, and get you going again but it, yeah sean salon superstars legends one thing we get asked a lot by aspiring jewelers is where do you start what what advice would you give to the young people who want to forge a career in jewelry or metal smithing Ooh. I think it's, it's got to be fun. You've got to enjoy what you're doing. So if you've got that, that, that passion to, to learn, and there, there's night schools. Um, I do night classes uh, locally. So there, there's probably a few in the area. YouTube, mm -hmm. at the bench, yeah. good place to start. Yeah. Um, there's lots of things out there. There's, there's lots of rubbish out there as well. Yeah. It's just finding one that works for you. Um, and giving it a go, having that, that confidence just to try it. It doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to have diamonds and pearls and gold to, to, to start. You can start with copper. Um, Silver is not too badly priced as a starting mm. starting place. Um, so, yeah, just, just give it a try. You've got to enjoy it. It's, don't, don't not try it. No. You know, if you want to do it, keep pursuing it and find out. And, and obviously practice makes perfect. It certainly doesn't happen right the first time. Find out why it hasn't done it. And keep on trying yeah that's how you learn it's, it's got to go wrong for you to progress um if you're getting it right all the time then there's something wrong because you, <laughs> you can't be getting it right all the time every time i make something something's going to go wrong yeah. but you learn from that you remember you get that up there in your knowledge bank and you move on um yeah if, if, if everything was easy everybody would do that mm. you, you've got to be passionate about it mm. yeah Absolutely. put your heart and soul into it mm. Um, so moving forwards, can you imagine focusing on one area of making jewellery? Um, and do you think that the show has changed your direction? Oh, the show has changed everything for me, the outlook in general. Um, I didn't realise what a rut I was in creatively. And from being on the show, meeting other jewellers, which I've never had the opportunity to do before, and using these different things, it's just opened my eyes to what can be done. Um, I've, I've, yeah, sort of stone setting is something I've got to do more of. I can get by and I'm sort of coming up with my own ideas and take on things, but I've got to learn more of that. Engraving fascinates me um, and to bring that in with the, the stone setting as well. Um, yeah, I've, I've got big things planned. I've just got to get that knowledge to move forward now. So yeah, that sort of stone setting is the big one for me. I'm playing with coloured stones, getting that, that sort of pop to, to make people take notice. Exciting times ahead then. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Lots to look forward to. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Lee, for, for coming over and taking time out of uh, a busy, busy afternoon. Really do appreciate it. Thank you so much indeed. No problem. It's, it's nice to be asked. Thanks for having me both. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. BBC Two, All That Glitters, airs on Tuesday at 8pm and is also available to view on iPlayer. <laughs>